Good morning. Lord, it's 1230. It ain't morning, it's afternoon. Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. Testimony Tuesday. Uh, here we go. So, I was thinking about this. I'm always thinking like, what am I going to... What, what's my testimony going to be today, right? So my testimony today may be a little different than what you're used to hearing um, testimony-wise. So I was thinking about how do you have a testimony in a unanswered, look, unanswered prayer, right? So um, 2014, my mom passed. And I'm going to give you a little backstory. In 2005, my mom was diagnosed with uh, cardiomyopathy, ended up having heart failure and some other heart conditions, right? And so she ended up one day just in the ICU. She wasn't feeling well. She drove herself to the hospital. Um, next thing they know, next thing you know, you know, she said they told her, I think she called my dad, but she said, she initially thought she had like pneumonia, right? Because she said this is what it felt like when she had pneumonia before. So she said she was going to go to the hospital, you know, go to the ER, see whatever. So they ended up saying they needed to, like, intubate her and all this stuff, right? So when we get to the hospital, she in ICU, intubated and everything. So she ended up with this diagnosis. They don't know where it came from. All they can say it, it was viral. A virus attacked her heart and she ended up with this, this you know, this diagnosis of cardiomyopathy um, and heart failure. And heart failure ultimately goes through stages. You get to the place where you would be considered to have end-stage heart failure and you probably need a heart transplant. So my mom dealt with her diagnosis of heart failure for many years. And she lived pretty good, you know, a pretty good life. Um, even with this diagnosis, she did her um, cardiac rehab. You know, she lost some weight and things like that. Um, and so 2014, it got to the point where when you have heart failure, um, I'm going to try to make it as layman as possible, everyday conversation. When you have a heart failure, ultimately heart failure is the result of something else. So your heart, heart failure just means that your heart isn't able to meet the body's demands. Your heart isn't able to keep up with the needs and the de demands of your body. You can have left-sided heart failure, right-sided heart failure. It just depends. You can have both. It's just what it is. So she needed to have this uh, device placed. It was called an LVAD, left ventricular assistive device. And it was going to help the left ventricle pump heart, I mean, pump blood out to her body, right? So she needed to have that done, but she really needed a heart transplant. So she was at U of M a couple of weeks before um, the heart, the, you know, the procedure. They were preparing her to have this procedure done, to have this LVAD placed. So she ended up having a surgery. The surgery took a lot longer than they expected. Um, you know, we're praying for her, right? We're praying for her. We believe in God. You know, the word of God says, you ask things in my name, you shall receive it. You believe it. It should be yours. You know, I'm paraphrasing, but right. And so we praying, for, we praying, we trust in God that she's going to be good, that she's going to get this, um, this device placed. They're teaching us how to care for it. She's got to have someone with her the whole time for the, you know, initially to switch out the batteries. And they're just showing us and teaching us, me and my siblings, how to care for this device and everything. Um, my mom ended up having a stroke and just some other stuff going on. And ultimately, she wasn't getting better. And we had to make a decision, you know, what we were going to do. So my siblings and I, when we sat down with the family, we decided that, you know, it would be best to like take her off life support. And that's ultimately what this, these machines were doing. They were keeping her alive because when they turned the machines off, she did pass. So what do you do when the thing that you've been praying for and you been, be, have been believing God for doesn't happen or it doesn't happen the way that you thought it would or that you intended for it to happen? We prayed and we trusted God and we believed God would heal her. But she passed. So what does that look like? You say, Toya, how is that a testimony? My testimony and my belief is that my mother received her healing. She didn't receive it here on this side, but I know she went to be with the Lord. And over there, she is healed. She's healthy. She's whole. She is everything that she couldn't be here. And I truly believe that her time here was up, right? Um, she made an impact on everyone's life who knew her. Like, if you, to know her was to love her. She was the oldest of her siblings. Like, anyone who knew my mother loved her because she was just sweet, kind, compassionate, caring. Probably too overly nice. Literally. 
in places she shouldn't have been, you know, but that's just who she was. And I am grateful to God that um, I know that she's with him, right? So that's my testimony on this Tuesday that I pray for God and we pray for God and we believed God to heal her. But we can't dictate how God decides to bring about the blessing. We can't dictate when he does it, how he does it. He does that how he chooses to do it. I lost my dad in 2012. I lost my mom in uh, 2014. But none of those things caused me to run away from God. None of those things caused me to question God. None of those things caused me to curse God, to be mad at God. It ultimately caused me to run to him because he was my strength. He was my peace. He was my joy. And I'm at a place in life when I speak about my mom and dad, I'm not from a place of sorrow. It's a, from a place of, of joy, right? I don't get sad. I don't sit around thinking about how much I miss them. And, you know, because that could get me down. But I can talk about them and I can share stories and I can just think about my childhood and different things and memories that I have. And I know that my mom and dad are both in a better place. And I know that. I believe that in my heart of hearts. I know we hear people say that all the time. And we don't always know what people be doing. But I know who they were behind closed doors. And no one's perfect. But I know that God had brought them together for a reason. I know that the love that they shared was unmatched. I know that they're both in a better place. I know that they both received the healing that they that that we sought God for for them. It just didn't happen the way that we thought it would happen. You know, it didn't happen the way that I thought it would happen. So I just wanted to share that today with you all on this testimony Tuesday. Um that's my testimony. I prayed for healing for my mom and she got it. Even though it wasn't the way I wanted her to get it. Excuse me. She would have been she would have turned 70 last year. So I would love to still have my mom here. Um, you know, it's nothing like being able to go to your, your parents' house and just sit on the couch or just, just you don't have no concerns about nothing when you're at your mom and daddy house, okay? So I wanted to end this or put this set of scriptures here um, as I share this testimony Tuesday with you all. So I'm coming out of 2 Corinthians um, 4, verse 16. I'm going to read four, verse chapter 4 verses 16 through 18 and it says the set of the scriptures is titled living by faith so we do not give up our physical body is becoming older and weaker but our spirit inside us is made new every day we have small troubles for a while now but they are helping us gain an eternal glory that is much greater than the troubles i know she got her eternal glory right we set our eyes not on what we see, but on what we cannot see. What we see will last only a short time, but what we, what we cannot see will last forever. I'm going to skip down to chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. We live by what we believe, not by what we can see. So I say that we have courage. We really want to be away from this body and be at home with the Lord. Right? That's what we... That, hopefully like this time that we have here on earth is short it is short but afterwards eternity is forever so please make the decision in your life today that your eternity would not be away from god but be with god the, the the uh the um the um the god of heaven when i'm thinking the most high god that god right so i say that we have courage we really want to be away from this body and be at home with the lord Verse 9, our only goal is to please God whether we live here or there. So that's my testimony today. I prayed for healing for my mother and she got it. She just didn't get it in the way that I thought she would. Because we all just knew she was going to come up out of that hospital. We were going to take her home. We were going to care for her. She was going to get on the transplant list. She was going to get her heart and she was going to be here for some more years. But that wasn't God's plan for her. And we all know in Jeremiah 1 and 5, the, uh, I believe it's 1 and 5, it says... For I know the plans that I have for you. Nope, that's not it. What did it say? Jeremiah 1 and 5. For I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Something like that. That's what it say. Let me see. I'm going to tell it to you. It says, before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you before you were born. I set you apart for a special work. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Everybody has a story to tell, a testimony to tell, to share the word of God with people. But when your time is up here, 
prayerfully you'll spend eternity with the Lord. So that's my testimony today. I pray it blesses you. Know that I love you, that God loves you, and I'll talk to you later.